Well, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies continue to really get hammered here pretty good, uh, getting absolutely no relief from that so-called fact-finding mission in front of the House Financial Services Committee yesterday. Remember, Bitcoin was at 68000 on November 10th, and as you can see, it's been a free fall ever since. So I'm not sure how much anyone may have learned yesterday or if any preconceived notions were even altered, uh, but I think Congressman Roger Williams of Texas was spot on when he commented, quote, it would only take a few misguided curveballs from Washington to undo some of the progress you've all put into motion. So I want to bring in his colleague now, joining me, uh, Representative Warren Davidson. Uh, Representative, uh, you know, what was accomplished yesterday and what do you make of, of the open hostility uh, this industry is facing in the House and then next week in the Senate? You know, yesterday was was really historic. I mean, I feel we had a great panel, uh, top tier companies. Uh, but the exciting thing is, if you just go back two years ago when Facebook came and pitched their idea of Libra, look how hostile my colleagues were then. But also look how ill informed they were. They asked some really embarrassingly bad questions, and uh, the the knowledge gap that a lot of my colleagues closed over the past two years, even the past year, was impressive to me. And so I feel like people are starting to get it. The conversations I've had in preparation for the hearings, um, you know, people know that I've been into this space for a long time. Uh, the level of interest is really up. So that's a good thing. So uh, one industry insider, Brian Brooks, the CEO of BitFury, uh, said that there are two ways to regulate this industry. One was, quote, to make sure only the richest had access to it. The other one was to introduce products like mutual funds. I got to tell you now. I think it's those ideas are sort of the antithesis of what makes this whole thing attractive to individual investors. But you've been working on this, so what are your thoughts? Well, I think the biggest thing in jeopardy is the ability to own your own assets, self-custody. The idea, this is open source code. Anyone with an internet connection could go download the code and begin uh, operating their own node. Now, you still have to find somebody to transact with. A lot of people are doing an account-based system. Companies like Coinbase, for example, or FTX uh, were on the panel talking about exchanges where you can buy um, digital assets. But self-custody is one of the things. So a lot of the panel focused on, well, we can really do a lot of surveillance capitalism. We can spy on our customers really well, and we'll report to the government. And that soothed a lot of my colleagues' consciences. But for me, it said, well, look, you shouldn't have to be a good spy on your customers in order to operate a business in America. Uh, individuals ought to be able to own their own private property. And fundamentally, that's what's going to revolutionize not just the payment system, but all of the nearly infinite potential use cases. Right. Go back to right. the early days of the internet. We were just scratching the surface. Right. Uh, of the internet, you know, when Steve Case was around, and I think, as Roger Williams pointed out, the the, the Babe Ruths of the era are transforming it, but it's going to set a new bar for innovation in this space. Let me switch gears real quick, and I've got less than a minute to go, but I got to squeeze this in because the House voted 428 to one uh, to pass a bill that would ban all imports from the Chinese region of Xinjiang, which, uh, unless of course the U.S. government can determine products that were made there were not made with forced labor. Now, uh, two things. First, will the Senate actually follow up and vote on this? And your, your, your thoughts on the opposition from large American companies like Nike and Coca-Cola? Look, I think it's the right thing to do. The United States government is the right place to enforce this kind of a ban. Uh, and look, moral credibility on human rights is what's called for right now. China has essentially said these people are going to be treated less than human. They're dehumanizing them. They're exploiting them. And it's high time that they were called out. Yeah. And earlier this year, we had a very passive way to do this by pushing it into the SEC and having publicly traded companies try to apply the leverage. Yeah. The United States government should apply the leverage. And it was great to see that vote. Congressman, it's always great talking to you. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. You too. Thank you.